when you ended up quitting driving, right? So you still race a race or two. The way I understand it, it's not really like this sort of planned thing. You just kind of do whatever you want to do. Um, how much do you, people ask me this question all the time and it's, it's a good question. How much do you miss it? What do you miss? Do you miss driving full time in any, at any level? I don't. You don't. I mean, not anymore. So I have to back up a little bit if we're going to talk about racing now. Uh, and, um, <laughs> so when you say when I quit driving, so if I go back to when, when Gibbs replaced me in a 20 car and then I didn't drive for a little bit, I really couldn't find exactly what I was looking for for the next year, but I really wasn't ready to quit driving. I mean, mm-hmm. we won the second last race of the year. I felt like I could still be competitive. I felt like I could contribute to a team and be an asset and, uh, probably the first couple of choices I had to go well and Gibbs, they, they didn't feel like that anymore. Right. Like they, they, didn't, they didn't feel like I could. So with that being said, I wasn't totally done. And then, you know, Jack had that thing where he wanted a little part-time help. And what and, were, can I ask you what were yeah. the opportunities that were presented to you after the Gibbs thing? There wasn't any. <laughs> That's you what said I'm saying. you had a couple. I thought. Well, there was a few, I mean, I, you know, the Gibbs thing didn't happen. And then, um, honestly, like, you know, Rick fired Casey, you know, so I went and uh, talked to Rick and uh, almost groveled and be like, hey, I don't care what you pay me. I don't care how long the thing is. You know, and obviously he made the right decision. William's doing awesome. But it's first year in Bush. I'll help him. I'll drive for one year. I'll do whatever you want. You know, I just want a chance to um, go and prove I could still do it. I was obviously extremely motivated at the yeah. time. There was nothing I'd rather do than go, you know, kick their butt every week and felt like, honestly, I still could. Um, you know, and that didn't happen. And then that was really about it. There was maybe one other one that didn't quite kind of work out. And then the rest of them, I had several, like, offers to go do stuff, but none of them were really – I knew none of them were going to be near as good as what I was doing, and I didn't really want to take a big step backwards. Sure. So you ran uh, – you didn't do anything for a while. Yeah. And – did you, you know, maybe you're, you know, you don't know that you're going to get a chance to drive the six car. You don't know you're going to get a chance to fill in at Ganassi. So in your mind, are you, are you coming, are you trying to like come terms with being done? Are you thinking, man, maybe I want to do, you know, I'm going to drive something. I just got to figure out what, what I want to, what that might be. What were yeah. You- so I'd say, so when, when 2017 was over, 2018 started, I was, I was fine with not racing, I kind of came to grips with it, you know, honestly by in 2017, probably by, you know, maybe October, I, you know, I understood that there wasn't Mm going to be something out there that I was really super crazy about doing. I thought I could run very good and do very well. So I was okay with that kind of came to grips with it. And then Jack called me a few times and kind of wanted me to help drive Trevor's car part time. They were kind of struggling and kind of wanted me back there. And, you know, I know one of Jack's biggest disappointments was probably when I left there um, after my contract was up to, to go to Gibbs. And I felt like it was an opportunity to hopefully go back and help him um, leave on better terms. You know, without Jack, I would never be sitting here. And he's, he did so much for me in my career. And I felt bad about how bad he felt when I left and kind of the way it went and, and didn't really know what I wanted to do in the future at the time, whether maybe it'd be stay, you know, involved in a team, maybe it'd be a manager of some sort or do something there, be involved, maybe not be an owner like what Brad ended up being, but, but maybe be more involved in it. So decided to go back and try that. And really glad I did because I felt like we left on much better terms. But um, honestly, just going back, uh, it wasn't really totally about, you know, how we performed or didn't perform, but it was about being gone three days a week again and the kids not being able to come much and they're all doing different stuff. And I'd be sitting in that dang motorhome just wishing I was with with, the kid, with Katie and the kids wherever they were, whether they're in Wisconsin or their home, yeah. or wherever they were. I just, I just, that's, what, you know, that's I, yeah, I just couldn't stand it. I was ready to, um, you know, to get back with them. So after eighteen was over, and uh, you know, they offered me to the full time ride for as long as I want to go do it. And really, yeah, and I just decided not to do it just because. I just uh, just couldn't stand being away all the time, yeah. you know. And then uh, 19 was awesome. That was probably one of the best years of my life, honestly. Uh, that, that that vacation we had, like I just had such an awesome year. And then um, I was okay with it. And then, honestly, in February, we went skiing, and it was right before Daytona 500, and I was kind of getting itch again. And I kind of had it, you know, in my head. I'm like, man, I think I could still do this. Like, <laughs> they're all racing. I'm doing this. And then shortly thereafter, COVID hit. And then I was sitting at home with nothing to do and wasn't missing anything. And the kids weren't there. And then, you know, Ganassi uh, called for me to go drive the 42 and that stuff happened to Kyle. And it was actually perfect timing for me because I was kind of having an itch thinking I could still do it. And, you know, 
all this stuff. I wasn't going to miss anything, right? Like it was a one day a week, no practice. I'm like, oh, this would be a great Perfect. opportunity. Went to Darlington, ran good. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. where I belong, back in a race car. I feel really good. And then, <laughs> you know, a couple months later, just uh, it was really good for me because it really um, – push the thought of ever being a full-time driver again out of my head. I realized I couldn't do it anymore. I realized that I couldn't. Why do you think you couldn't do it? Uh, you know, any, I'm going to tell you something, and you you may or may not agree with this, um, but I think most drivers that get to drive almost as long as they want to, they come to the spot where they realize they're not as good as they once were. And the ones who are going to tell you they never came to that realization or never knew it, even though they never tuned anybody else, is probably not telling you the truth. So it's just – um, I could just tell, I remember Jeff Gordon telling me things about like when he was racing stuff away, he goes, eh, there's just things that are different. It's hard to explain until it happens, you know, and you could just tell, you know, like when you're at your best, you probably remember this, like, you know, you'd make moves and before you even thought about making it, you already made it and you're in the right, right spot in the right hole. And you knew where, you, like a lot of times when you're looking in the mirror, you just knew where everything was happening. And you know, you're ahead of the car. It felt like you're going 40 miles an hour instead of 200. And, um, and I wouldn't have any practice. It was a different team. There's yeah. just so many different factors here i didn't race for a year and a half and i got in this car but it was just the opposite i was always behind you know i was always behind the car by the time i was ready to make the move there was already somebody in the hole um i felt like uh i was so far behind where the car was i felt like we were doing 300 miles an hour instead of 170 it was just it's just everything's different yeah. you know it's just everything is happening so fast and it's just hard to uh, uh just wasn't as good as i once was i can I understand like. i can understand some of those comments like um when i go race the bush car once a year I don't know where the corner of the car is. Like, you know, you'll yeah. bump into things and go, oh, <laughs> shit, I didn't know that, you know. You just, yeah. you know, those things, when, when you drive the car every single week, yes. the car p- becomes part of your body. Yep. You know, it's like it's you buckle into it and you it's all one thing and you know where all every inch of this car is at at all times. And I think, um, you know, like you're saying, you, you know, you're, you'll find yourself looking in the mirror going, uh, am I clear? Where is this? Where is everything? Yeah. Going? Where is everything around me? Cause you just aren't, it was second nature. You didn't even have to look before. Um, isn't that more about repetition than it is age? Yes. But also, um, age, uh, one of the things that comes with age is your will, your willingness to take the risk or be patient or, or, or dedicate um, the time to it or just take the risk. Like, um, well, like he's yeah. talking about, like sometimes we would make moves going, you know, yeah, it worked. And, you know, when you get older, you stop doing those things. Yeah. You're you're more yeah. measured. Yeah, I think there's a couple. Of I think you don't process things as quickly no. as, you, as you do when you're younger. You're obviously probably smarter and you see more things and whatever. We don't process as quick. And then doing it every week's a big deal, right? Like when you race mm-hmm. all the time. It's just so much easier. And then when, you, when I went and raced that year, is like there, were, like I said, there was no practice or something that they throw you in there, and you never race those yep. rules, and you could never really work through things. And and it was hard. You know, I was starting in the middle of the pack, and those cars were so bad arrow wise, you couldn't qualify. And uh, so there was a lot of things stacked up against me. Not to make excuses, but um, they're legit. In a way, that was good because it kind of got out of my mind because I knew it was yeah. time for it to be over anyway, and that really solidified it because I ran so terrible, and I always said that I would never. Never run, run that bad to get paid or go do whatever, right? And I just um, tried as hard as I could to make that thing happen. I knew Chip needed that car to run good and a lot going on with COVID and sponsors and everything else. So um, I wanted it more than anybody to make that that work and go run good and win a race or two, but it didn't happen. When you get behind the wheel of a late model, a super late model at Slinger, do you feel like that comes easier or that that's more comfortable, that fits um, you better? Yeah, I mean, I I was comfortable in the cars when I raced them. The last year I raced them, I just wasn't as good at it. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I ran a couple late mile races last year, and I didn't run very well. I was comfortable in them. Um, you know, that stuff all changes too. It's hard to beat those guys that do it yes. every week. Those yeah. cars feel so different now that they're on bump stops and everybody runs all these different setups. Like it's just it's different, you know. Then um, I think if you could do it every week or or run twenty races a year instead of two, mm-hmm. I think it'd probably do better. Um, Aren't you I used going... to be able to show up and run two and win them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I, I mean that was literally like couldn't. a couple years ago. Yeah, last year I couldn't. We were, I think we ran fifth or something at Slinger. But we didn't run great, but uh, I'm gonna go try again this year. You're but then do we it ran again. we ran those couple SRX races and and we ran really good at Nashville. Probably could have won Nashville if I'd have known what I was doing just a little bit more. I think we finished second, second or third. Maybe we finished third. Um, but we ran really competitively there with those guys that were all racing and i felt good about that that was a lot of fun and then other two races were dirt dirt tracks which i'm not the best at yeah so you are planning to run another late mile race this year was 
how do you decide that you're going to do that? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna run Slinger and I'm gonna run Eldora in an SRX car for for fun. Cause Why? I'm so cause I'm so good at dirt. <laughs> Why do you choose to do dirt? Uh, it was the only race they really had available. To be honest with you, and you so. <laughs> really enjoyed the series that much. You know, it was pretty fun. I yeah. was planning on trying to run them all this year, but then, um, you know, uh, Hawk kind of picked some different things. I think a lot of current drivers wanted to go race SRX mm-hmm. from NASCAR this year for whatever reason. I know they're on Thursdays, but for whatever other reasons. So there wasn't a lot of races available, and I like going up there. So I figured I'd go try one more. And then uh, as far as Slinger. So my friend Joe and, and Jason, they own that Pathfinder chassis in Wisconsin. So they'll build a house car a lot and come and ask me to drive it. And typically when we can go there and run good, you know, it kind of helps your business. And plus, mm-hmm. I'd love to see those guys and go racing with them and stuff. So that's the main reason I do it and go see some fans. And and when a car runs good, Slinger is really fun to race at. Right. It's one of the most fun tracks you can drive at when your car turns decent. It's what, tra- what track are you, what track do you have the most personal connection to from your super late model past? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Madison was closest to home, and we had a couple of really fun years there. We first started running good in the late model. Um, Slinger is probably one of the most fun tracks you can race at, so probably one of those two. Yeah. Do you um, think that you'll – What do you just kind of not even put uh, – is Matt Kenseth going to race super late models for a few more years? You're in really <laughs> good – Dude, you're in really good health. Like, you take such great care of yourself. And – you're sharp mentally. Um, you're. I can't. So I've I asked a lot of people that's come to this table this question because I'm kind of battling it with it myself at this moment. It's like, how should I be racing? How much should I race? Do I need to race? Is it really what I need to be doing? You know, I'm sort of in this weird place where I can't figure out exactly what to do. I love driving my late model stock car, but do I need to try to drive it more? Is that really? Am I going to regret that decision? You know. Um, or just, is it that not that big of a deal? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, because you drive, you enjoy, you know, especially when you run good. Um, do you think you're doing it enough for yourself or? That's a good question. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't really have a good answer there for yeah. you. I mean, I, last year I kind of felt like doing a little more racing. I felt like I was uh, I was needing to do something. I, I feel like that again this year. A lot of times I'm like, yeah. I need something, yeah. you know professionally or whatever to go do and uh so at times i feel like that and i'll go up there and do that i don't know that's necessarily the right thing or exactly what what i need to be or want to be doing it depends mm-hmm. how i run you know like yeah. last year we didn't run well at all so honestly if i go up and just run awful lot of track that we usually win at or can run in the top three every time we go uh probably maybe figure out something else to or not go do it anymore i don't know how does katie feel about you doing that uh, she doesn't care. Doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, she's she's. What do your girls think about fine. it? Do they go? I don't think they care either. <laughs> do they do they like to see it though? Um, do they because they're you know yeah. your girls haven't experienced a bunch. Yeah. You know, last year was fun. So Nashville, when I went and ran that first SRX race, was fun because Were they all there? Uh, yeah, because uh, Ross and and Amber came um, with their two kids. Yeah, and then all my kids were there, and Katie was there, so they all got to come and see me race, and a lot of them have never seen me race before, um, which was really fun. Um, so that was cool. Um, you know, it's funny as time goes by, it's hard, hard for me to tell. Like they, they're not really, the kids aren't really around it anymore. When they're around it every week, they kind of understood it and everything, but, um, they all went with the Darlington this year, which was kind of fun where I saw you down there and, uh, they kind of, I think maybe appreciated a little bit or looked at things a little bit, but I, I don't know that they really think about me racing much, really. I'm going to tell you something. The piddling in the races is a good idea. And you run about three or four a year, yeah. and that feels. And you also give yourself some test dates to make sure uh-huh. that you can be competitive. Yeah. Doesn't that sound nice, Matt? I mean, listen, yeah. take yeah. it three or four because that's just enough, I think, to you can run with them. Yeah. You don't feel like you're out to lunch in those things because if you did, you, if you felt because those guys are good in the car store, yeah. but you don't feel like you're out to lunch on it because you get enough little test time and the stuff to make sure the car's good. That's perfect schedule yeah i mean here's the other thing i mean honestly too like you you run more if it was like it was 20 years ago right like where there's all these guys that own cars like hey you want to come drive my car sure now it's like 
you know, like I had one guy ask me to drive at Wilkesboro. You, you know what it is? He goes, yeah, Dale Jr. told me that uh, I should call you. He don't want to drive my car at Wilkesboro. He should call you and drive my late mile. I was like, man, I'll go up there and drive it for you. No problem. He's like, he's like, okay, well, we need to get twenty grand. I'm like, I'm not paying you twenty thousand dollars to go drive a race car. Yeah. You nuts? Like I haven't paid to drive a race car since Ever. since <laughs> yeah. I, Long time. Oh, I always paid for own yeah. stuff, me and dad. But as soon as somebody let me drive their cars, I'm like, man, I don't have to go to work and spend yeah. my money on tires and do all this. I'm I'm doing this, you know. So I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. So. That has changed a lot. You know, there used to be a lot of even late model teams when I was younger, right? They just they're looking Call for you drivers. And come you know? race. Yeah, here, come race. We'll give you thirty percent of the purse or something if you want to drive it, or even if you drove it for free, whatever. But now it's just now it's just the whole thing has turned into a how much money will you pay me to come and drive your cars? It's yeah, just, but if that's, it's just so backwards. You if, know, it's if drivers it's not, hiring owners instead of owners hiring drivers. Okay, yeah. but what we're saying is that there's a situation that may not be that. Yeah. If, I mean, we're trying to okay. say, look, this is this is exactly what you need right here. It's, it's the, a, a, a no commitment, just race for fun, yeah. do it with your friend. Yeah, feel good. Go ahead and sign you up. I got some. I got. Yeah. I get you to a race. Yeah, drive a good car. Oh yeah, good car. It don't. It, I'll tell you this: the car doesn't win when I drive it, but every time Josh Berry drives it, it wins. <laughs> 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 so that's how you know it's good. It's a good car. <laughs> I just can't figure it out. You can think about it. Man, people would love that, though. He'll do it. He would do it. I talked to him at Darlington about it, and he said he'd come run a race. I said, man, I got a cars tour. I need you to come show up once. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. It'd be so much fun. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms. 